With the iPhone 16 Pro, the focus is on cameras and Apple intelligence. The problem is Apple intelligence isn't quite here yet. We can test some features in the developer beta that's currently available but that's not necessarily the same as the experience the public will get when the update rolls out in October. It's not unprecedented for new iPhones to launch without some marquee features, sure, and thankfully there is still plenty that the iPhone 16 Pro brings. From camera control, the Fusion camera and other video related updates to slightly bigger displays and iOS 18, the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max are integrating successors even absent the vaunted intelligence features that are still to come. Even if you are not a gluten for buttons, there are still some camera updates that might intrigue you. This year's flagships sport what Apple calls a 48 megapixel fusion camera which has a faster quad pixel sensor. This enables what the company describes as zero shuttle lag which is wording it has used repeatedly over the years. In this case, it is referring to how quickly the camera will capture a shot after you press the shutter button. I will admit I was initially confused by this update in part because it records relearning some behaviors I had adopted to mitigate the shortfalls of older cameras. Basically the iPhone 16 Pro's cameras are now so fast that when I asked someone to throw something so I could capture it in motion to see how still the images were, my shots ended up being of the person holding the object. Our video producer and I were very confused and it wasn't until the zero shuttle lag concept was explained clearer to me that I got it. I had become used to pressing the shutter early since cameras in my experience would be fractions of a second slow. Apple has become so fast that it actually captured the literal moment I tapped the button instead of the split second after when the object was in mid-air. Depending on your mood, the new photographic styles can be fun or serious. Apple's tweaked the built-in camera filters to not only offer more options but give you greater control. Due to how the company has refined its processing each year, there is also an improved depth map captured when it detects a face in the scene. This combined with a greater focus on color signs around skin tone has led to what might be my favorite new iPhone 16 feature. Whether I shot them in portrait mode or not, photos of people, what I took using the iPhone 16 Pro were a dream to edit. Simply switching between the standard, natural, luminous, quiet or ethereal styles already resulted in improvements to be colors and shadows, but I could also tap on each thumbnail to across the new editing touchpad and drag a dot around. This let me more precisely tweak the hues and contrast levels and an additional slider below let me adjust how warm the image was. It's been about two months since the public beta for iOS 18 was released and it was nice to get a taste of upcoming features like the new customizable home pages, expanded back reactions and the redesigned photos app. With the phone iPhone 16 launch, iOS 18 is basically ready for prime time with some caveats. This year, more than ever, it's hard to figure out what's coming to your iPhone and what isn't. With the release of Apple Intelligence slated for October, features like writing tools, cleanup for photos, and the redesigned Siri won't be ready till next month, and even then, your non-pro iPhone 15 won't be compatible. Plus, some features that were teased at WWDC like Ganmoji, 
still haven't been added to the iOS 18.1 developer beta, which is where most Apple intelligence features have been arriving as a preview for app makers. Within the iPhone 16 lineup too, there are things coming only to the Pro models like multi-layer recording in voice memos. It's confusing and can make choosing your iPhone a trickier decision, but for this review at least the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max are getting everything. I cannot wait to try out multi-track recording in voice memos and I hope Apple sees this yearning as a sign that it should bring this to more devices. It was nice to get time with iOS 18 even in the absence of Apple intelligence. Honestly, I'm not even sure I'd like those features that much. In a similar way, Gemini AI was nice on Pixel 9 Pro series but didn't feel like must-haves. Some of the new iOS 18 touches I noticed immediately are the refreshed control center, which took some getting used to as I had to relearn how to swipe back to the home page since there are more pages to scroll through now. I especially enjoyed seeing the new little chat bubble appears on my voice recordings, indicating that a transcript had been generated for them and too. I haven't exchanged messages with Android toting friends yet. I'm glad to see RCS support is finally live this week. Two, I was excited for the new custom routes tool in Maps. I struggled to actually create them. You can set your start and end points and have the app close the loop for you or just tap landmarks or points on the map to get the route to basically connect the dots. Unfortunately, no matter how many times I tried to get the route to cut through a building where I knew a pedestrian walkway existed, maps reinstated me at every turn, forcing the route to go through more established paths instead. It's not unreasonable, but certainly not the open world root creation feature I was envisioning. The best thing about iOS 18 and also some new features in the iPhone 16 lineup is the customizability. I do appreciate that if you don't like something, you can usually turn it off with the new ability to place apps outside of a rigid grid. You can now lay your home screen out just the way you like. The redesigned photos app lets you create and pin collections so you can more easily find the pictures most important to you. And again, I'm glad Apple is giving people the option to turn off camera control altogether or adjust its sensitivity. Apple's caution is sometimes warranted, especially at a time when mistrust of AI-generated content runs rampant, the company taking its time to get Apple intelligence right is understandable. But its deliberation doesn't always lead to winners. While I appreciate the attempt to differentiate camera control with the touch sensor for more versatility, I am not yet convinced on its usefulness. The good news is, and I cannot stress this enough, you have the option to tune it to your liking. And that's the theme I'm seeing in recent Apple features that hint at more thoughtfulness than usual. If you don't like something or if something isn't right for your needs, you can adjust or disable it. In iOS 18, you have greater control over your home screen's app layout and can pin custom collections for easier reach. In the Photos app, the action button introduced last year could have been a spectacular fail had Apple not let you still keep it as a mute switch, but it managed to give people more functionality while maintaining the status quo for those who are just as resistant to change. Change is scary, change is hard, but without change there is no progress. Apple's cautious approach is a tricky balancing act that's evident on the iPhone 16 Pro. Some new features like audio mix and custom routes in Maps delivers mixed results, otherwise like photography styles are hits. Then there are the basic ingredients like good battery life and durable, attractive designs that Apple cannot neglect. 
the iPhone 16 Pro's super battery life holds it back from beating the competition, which is stiffer than ever this year, especially from Google. Luckily for Apple, most people who have iPhones are going to stick with iPhones, it's just easier. For those already sucked into the ecosystem, the iPhone 16 Pro are worth the upgrade from a model that's at least 2 years old. If you already have an iPhone 15 Pro, for the sake of our planet and your wallet, you might prefer to hold off on upgrading, especially since this year's devices aren't that much different.